Good evening, everybody. Uh, we sh oh, nice. To <laughs> Good to see you, Mom. Hi, Musarat. Hi, Musarat. Hi, Saloni. Hi, Onashri. Yes, I guess that's the name. Hello, Yamini. Hi, Sandeep. Okay, hello to everybody. I guess we have more people joining in. Uh, we will wait a couple of more minutes and I guess we can get started with some of the questions and uh, really a little bit of discussions on, you know, I want a dog now and now what? So. Hello, Sanu Thank you for coming on. Who's that? Sanu <laughs> So everybody decides that they want to get a dog and uh, they're running Helter Skelter to figure out what dog they should have and where do they find this dog from. So how should you, in your view, how should someone choose a breed? Okay, first of all, I think uh, when you've decided you want a dog, then as a family, if, you are, if you're a family, you sit down and you talk in your family okay. about, you give yourself about four or five breeds which are easily available in India. That also is very important. Okay. And then, and then I, you know, you, you talk. It's not about what the children want or what the parents want. Basically, at the end, you know, like it's what, uh, how you, what you can manage, what sort of mm. hope you have, what sort of system, what sort of help you have. Um, are you at okay. home? What sort uh, of space do you have in your lifestyle? Your space, your lifestyle. Uh, are you going to spend how long can you spend time with that dog uh it's okay. it's, it's a 15 year commitment so right. it's really important to talk as a family and then after that you decide um on the breed okay and if that breed suits you and then you start speaking to people you start talking you start getting information uh, there is the internet. You get a lot of information on the internet, but unfortunately for India, um, the breeds which are here uh, are not native to Indian clim climate conditions. So we, before we go into that, uh, you know, there are people who say, uh, you know, why not? Why should I get a breed? Why not any dog and so on and so forth? So what are those three things that you need to consider? I mean, if you were to take examples of certain breeds of dogs, uh, what are, why should you choose one breed over the other? For example, uh, uh, I can go on for a long time on this, but I'll make it very brief. Each yeah. breed has been bred for a specific purpose. And so there are working dogs, there are gun dogs, there are terriers, there are hounds. Um, so all of these, breed, uh, these groups these, that uh, they're bred for a particular purpose and they all need specific uh, space, they need, you know, handling, they all have different temperaments, they all are, you know, um, uh, it's important to understand that to keep a, um, a terrier, that terrier will, he's a ratter by nature. Okay. So he, yeah, so he's going to be all over the place. You know, and if you want him to just sit down and sit on your lap and be a you know cute dog, he's not about to do that. Mm. You know? And if you uh, if you keep a German Shepherd, they're all cute. They're all beautiful little puppies. As puppies, you know, all breeds are beautiful. So when you're gonna go, you're gonna fall in love with any of the breeds you're gonna look at as a puppy. But when you come home, you have to understand that that dog has been bred for a specific purpose. And if you do not, aren't able to give a little bit of that, um, you know, uh, environment for that particular dog. Um, they remain really cute and sweet for about a year, and then their true, um, you know, um, characteristics start coming out. Mm -hmm. you know? Like, like uh, in India, I think after the pug, this is just a, you know, uh, uh, after the pug, the beagle, you know, the beagle, it's a hound. Yeah. It's like it's become very, very um, popular mm -hmm. because medium-sized dog, smaller to medium-sized dog, short coat, with beautiful puppies with the long ears and you know the snoopy type look. And you bring one of those home, and trust me, they're really cute, but they have a mind of their own. They have absolutely that you cannot train them. 
Okay. And you can't train them, and they need a place to run because that's okay. what you know. Earlier, they were all bred for these, you know, they, mm-hmm. they used to have dogs. So, again, yeah. By nature, I mean Indians as a lifestyle are not typically the ones who run to a gym or go on hikes and treks and you know so on and so forth. While having said that, you know a lot of people even living in apartments choose to get huskies or you know. Um, so I, in my personal opinion, huskies do just fine as long as you take them out. But I think what is important for people to understand is that they are really active breeds, and unless you are this outdoorsy sort of a person who can give you a husky a run. Uh, you know, maybe on a cycle or, you know, the active lifestyle. So I think uh, one of the, I mean, if we were to kind of summarize what kind of, how active is your own lifestyle? Uh, does that provide for us? How yeah. many have you seen uh, behind a cycle? Oh, not many, which is why I'm saying out of my experience, because yeah. I have a friend who's got two huskies and the way they work their huskies, they do a fantastic job. And I see a very different husky in their house compared to everybody else's. Correct, you know? correct. Correct. So, I mean, I, I, in fact, I was just po- pointing it out so that people then start thinking from that perspective, saying that if I don't do this on a regular basis, am I going to change my life by getting a dog like that? You know, so if you're not going to really change your lifestyle for the dog, then, you know, get a dog to suit your existing lifestyle. You have to understand when you get a dog, uh, it doesn't make sense for you to change your lifestyle. You see, you have to get a dog for your enjoyment. Mm-hmm. You get a dog because you want a companion. It's very right. important that you understand the word companion. So a uh, 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 husky might make, one husky in the house might make an all right companion as long as you're giving it the correct, you know, the air conditioning and the food right. and the, the long, long, long walks, morning, yeah. afternoon. Evening and afternoon is a little difficult because of the. But heat. do you think the walks really cut it? Because you're not really walking up your heart rate. You're just you know strolling around. Does, does that really help? Uh, yeah, it does. Uh, walk walking is is the next best thing. I can't I can't tell you to uh, cycle with a husky or any breed in India because uh, before the age of one year, one and a half years of age because those bones are developing so you're not you can't take them out no no, no so typically right, right now we're only discussing adult dogs so we will have that puppy discussion which is very important because everybody gets excited when they get a puppy the only time they work the pup dog is when the dog is two months old and three months old and four months yeah. old you know so we, we'll come back on that discussion but okay and uh, you discuss beagle so uh, and also about their them having a mind of their own. So management versus maintenance. You know, if you were to make comparisons between a couple of breeds, uh, you know, what would be the difference that people can understand? How would you elaborate on this point so that people can get it well? Again, first thing I ask a lot every day. I, every day I get calls about can I can you get you know arrange for this puppy? Can you help me find you know find a puppy? Blah blah blah. The first thing I ask is, uh, do you have children? Do you have children? Is the children wanting the breed? Are you wanting the breed? See, the parents, after all, at the end of the day, it's not it's not for the help in the house to look after your dog. It's It will come on the parent. And if one of the parents doesn't like dogs, but just getting a, a dog for their child because they promised the child, you know, you get straight A's or you get, you know, this percentage in school and I'll get mm-hmm. you a dog. I discourage them. I totally okay. discourage them. And I tell them, you know, get a goldfish <laughs> or, or maybe a cat. You know, cats okay. are, they're, they're, they're nice. They love their space. They love sitting in the house and, you know, and they're very cuddly and they're very sweet and cute. And okay. so, but a dog is actually uh, what the parents are going to look after. And it's mm-hmm. not anything for the, for the you know, um, family help to be mm-hmm. taken walks to be feeding them okay and to and to be training them and working with them because once they start going the cuteness uh for me it stays but for a lot they don't stay anymore you know and when you there's a whole there's a whole um, regime you have to do mm-hmm. with it it's like bringing a, a family member home it's, it's, okay. it's not it's not really rocket science okay so people really fret over i mean although uh they still like 
mid-sized shorthead dogs. We have a lot of Shih Tzus in this country. We have a lot of Lhasas, I think, in the past. We have a fair amount of Cocker Spaniels. Is really grooming, uh, you know, a difficult thing in your point of view? How, how long do you really think it would take to keep a dog in good condition or if you are looking after the dog well on an everyday basis? I would give, I would say five minutes morning, five minutes evening. Um, yes. if, if you've got, like uh, uh, you mentioned the Cocker Spaniel. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Out of all the breeds, all, all the breeds that should be having the longest throat. Yeah. And I would, say, I would say five minutes morning, five minutes evening, just before food time, give them a good brushing, a comb, just a yeah. comb, a tight tooth comb. And you mm -hmm. get those, you get that comb with teeth that swivel. So just yeah, give, yeah. Him, give him a comb down. Let mm -hmm. him have his food, and that's all it needs. And maybe okay. once, once in two weeks, you bathe him. That's it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think that's also my experience with my cockers that it doesn't take more than five or ten minutes to kind of get them all in place. And um, yeah, so that's it. So that's where, and uh, you know, people have issues about uh, dog shedding coats and things like that. So, uh, what do you, do you think that is that should be one of the considerations while people are getting dogs? Like some people might think that okay, let, let me get a lab versus again back to cocker spaniel because I'm just familiar with that. How does this long coat and short coat play out in the whole shedding scene? The lab sheds as much as the uh, cocker spaniel. Uh, I have a lab and it's right. a black lab and the floor is green so you see right. black hair all day long it's right. like that. Uh, so um, uh, like you might be seeing tufts of hair I just see black all right. over right. On yeah. floor. so yes they shed the same they shed the same so it doesn't uh, to me it doesn't make a difference it's just that when you get a long haired dog uh, you need to keep it cool. You yeah, need I, it. I find it easier to pick up the long hair and it doesn't stay on my sofa. It just comes off very fast. This is like you have to do rounds of lint rolling and things like that to get everything off. But That's it. That's it. Oh, yeah. just, vacuum, yeah. lint roll, yeah, all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just vacuum so, or it's a rubber glove and take yeah, it off. Yeah. The, yeah. Right. Uh, another question that everyone, you know, discusses while they plan to get a dog is whether to get a male or a female. What? How would you approach this? Okay, so here um, I would uh, like to put in, like we're in India, and <laughs> your your first preference is always a male. Yes. And I always try to convince people, what's wrong with the female? So they uh -huh. go. Uh, rightfully, they come into heat every six months and it's difficult and blah, 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 blah. Is it really that difficult in your opinion? No, not at all. Not yeah. at all. In fact, in fact, I find um, the females are very, very affectionate. Right. When they're, with, they're more affectionate and they're, um, they're you know, uh, like uh they stay at home they're not they don't give you so many problems whereas a male um uh, he's gonna if you don't train him well he's gonna pick up his leg and pee pee all, all over yeah all over in spots okay <laughs> yeah. and he's gonna have his favorite places in the garden whereas a female she doesn't she doesn't do that she doesn't right. pee 10 times uh in the garden she'll do it once and she'll come inside right so and they're more trainable, they're sweeter, and I, I just feel females are very nice. But, you know, the concept that the male dog, I want one dog, I want a male dog, that yeah. I've not been able to take away to that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of In fact, for me personally, when it comes to a large breed, I like the way the males look. So if it's a German Shepherd that I'm picking, I like the way the male German Shepherd looks. But when it comes to my Cocker Spaniels, you know, I like the cute... You know, nice uh, cockers, and also this peeing in marking corners is more to do with the small and medium-sized breeds that they uh, who do it a lot more yeah. than large breeds. I, I don't really see large breed males going and marking the house corners. You know, in uh, sofas and shoes and bags on the floor. Yeah, but you've already had one year of them chewing all your furniture and chewing all your. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you know. No, okay. but me with you. Marking is more on small dogs, and they just I. They, they're always marking that place. 
and yes. also you know if you look at um, you know first time dog families uh, families with kids who are getting a dog for the first time uh, would you think of male is better for them or a female is better for them um i i i don't have a i wouldn't have a pref i wouldn't really um i would say that if it's a large dog and this is the first time uh female is always a better preference to them okay. but um i know a few people who have a female and they love a female and they want right. only females they right. only want females and um male is there too if they can control if they can control yeah. if they are the alpha in the in the household then i would say go ahead for the male okay okay now uh, when people choose uh, they have now we've gone through how do you choose a breed uh, you know what kind of activity levels do you really go out for a walk uh, are you able to brush and comb your dog versus are you able to manage the behavior of the dog and so on and so forth and uh, at this juncture now we are looking at uh, you know you could get a puppy or you could also get an adult dog you know we will get to the source of where we get these puppies and dogs from but you know uh you have a choice of getting a puppy versus sometimes you get lucky finding an adult dog so what 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 do you think should be in people's minds and what should they be considering while deciding puppy versus an adult okay so that depends again about how much time you have as a family to spend with that dog are mm -hmm. you going to get the commitment of yeah. uh, can you get a puppy uh children you know that it's going to be almost 24 hour uh, yeah. every time a puppy wakes up you need to take him outside to see otherwise yeah. her. otherwise that dog is going to start being in that yeah house. i so, think that is a point i really have to you know stress here and tell people that when you get a puppy puppy is going to sleep a lot puppy is going to wake up that many number of times and every time the puppy wakes up you have to every time you know yeah. we need to take that dog to a place to an area where it's going to be because he's that's the first thing it's going to do and right. and then he's going to go uh, the dog is going to go through uh teething she's he's going to go through um uh, drawing things you know all sort of all, all sorts of things so you have to give a commitment of your time now yes if you're at home and you have ample time go for a puppy and you know but uh if you ask me and if you uh, get an adult dog um, I've never, uh, I've, I've got a lot of, I've got many adult dogs right. and I've, I've never had a problem where it's not bonded with me. Right. They bond because it's, it's a one-on-one, -on -one what, how much you bond with your, your dog is right. going to bond with you. So right. that, that much time you're going to give that male dog or sorry, adult dog and he's going to bond back with you. So I've never had a problem and I've kept. I've, I've uh, got dogs which are you know, German Shepherds, which are three years old, two years old. We've imported dogs and they've um, or got dogs from other people and they've adjusted just as like as if they were with me as puppies all their life. So, um, so it would be right to say that it depends on how much time you devote and what is your experience in, uh, you know, prior experience racing dogs. But I think one of the good things is if you get a really nice adult dog who's being rehomed, uh, you know, for any reason, not because the dog has something uh, happening to the dog or there is a behavioral issue. But if it's coming from a good home, uh, which is just being rehomed for some of their personal reasons, I think that's always a good option to kind of uh, consider. Uh, you I would can go for it. Go for I it. Always, yeah, yeah, yeah. I always say go for it. That's yeah. that's fabulous. I mean, imagine you get a one-year dog. That Fully <laughs> Fully and even you know like it's it's fabulous someone else yeah. has done the work for you you know yeah, and yeah. you got this uh dog already there so you know all that feeding yeah. getting up five times a day feeding the dog yeah, as yeah. Puppy, then four times then three times giving all the shots taking him to yeah. the vet all done that's all taken care of all done trained and ready to you know ready delivered to your doorstep Yes, now, yes, uh, you know, people talk about purebred dogs and, you know, what is really a purebred dog? When I say that I want to get a Cocker Spaniel or I want to get a Golden Retriever, what should it really mean? Why Why do you, what What? what does that take? Okay, so uh, purebred dogs are usually 
um, they are registered with the kennel clubs, okay? And their, their um, whole generation, usually about a five generation, some you can trace back to 10, 15, 20 generations, uh, they're all coming down from, uh, from a line. And, um, and um, you can get the information from your local kennel club. Mm -hmm. uh, they usually, uh, uh, each dog, as I told you, is bred for a particular uh, so uh, they're, they're, and they're, the dog alternate dog. reference to them is purpose bred dogs, right? Yeah. That that dog is going to display signs of what what it's being bred for, you know, mm -hmm. and and um, so uh, that's that's basically the difference between a pure bred and um, and uh, you know. And I would say predictability is one factor of identifying a purebred dog. You kind of expect what this dog is supposed to behave like when you say that oh, I'm getting a golden retriever. They're supposed to have those, uh, you know, uh, temperamental dispositions. Correct. Absolutely. As again, yeah. But uh, but uh, Cherian, I'd like to say that your dog, which is um, doesn't show that, it doesn't mean it's not a purebred. Also, you know, you can have purebreds which are not showing the signs. Like you can have a Labrador which does not fetch, or a yeah. Labrador which doesn't get into the water. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that doesn't mean it's not a purebred. It doesn't mean right. it's because you know a Labrador sees water, it has to get inside. That's a right. characteristic of a Labrador. So yeah. there are I've seen a lot of Labradors which uh, don't they don't like the water. They won't go inside. You know, they mm -hmm. stay. Away and and i've seen other breeds which just jump into the water and yes you love it when that they display that characteristics right you know? and okay. um, but um so that will make it um uh, a mixed breed okay no no i'm not saying mixed breed but you know people uh, in my view i was just really asking that is it just the looks or should you be not looking for a holistic package temperament and looks all into one and that is when it really becomes a purebred or you know that's why you say that you know i want a golden retriever because i want that kind of a temperamental disposition rather than look like a golden retriever but behave like something else but chirin hmm? behavior is always what we make of the dog right we for that okay mm -hmm. uh, when a golden retriever is not behaving like a golden retriever usually the the person who's raising that dog has something to do with that right yeah? okay so, so you, you have to understand that you know um uh dog is usually never the fault of the dogs okay and I say that like almost almost yeah. 99.8 percent it's not the dog's fault so when people typically ask me, I want a trainer for my dog, I first check on them and say that, do you really need training or your dog needs training? You know, so, uh, yeah. Absolutely. It's always the human that needs the training. Okay. So uh, one of the first instinctive uh, statements that I make when someone asks me, you know, should I get a dog? I said, if you really want peace and quiet in your life, don't get a dog. Yeah. Get a cat. <laughs> Sorry? Get a cat. Uh, get a cat yeah that that's that so i was never a cat person and finally yeah you know uh i think two years ago my wife and kids they were uh you know driving back from somewhere and somebody called them and said oh they've just rescued a cat a kitten from somewhere and uh, they were fostering the kitten and uh their cat was not really enjoying the company of the new kitten so they said could you foster it for us for a little while and that was the beginning of our cat story and then that's now we problem. have no. Uh, no, 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 just one so far. I've been very firm with it. I said, uh, there are, so their point is, every time you get a dog, we'll get a cat. Okay, okay. So, so not work yeah. very well. Then. So I said, oh. that's not going to be really good. I said, okay, wait, we'll, we, we let me get used to this whole idea. But I think we've gotten to the level of the cat cuddling up to me uh, in bed. So it, it, it's a good sign. And we always tell people, you know, I said, I never considered having a cat ever in my life, but that's one of the easiest pets, I think, to keep because once litter trained, yeah, you can travel, you can go to work without thinking of any trouble. You All you have to do is give it a scratch pad and, you know, and that's easily available these days. So, But they are really affectionate. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. They're not so standoffish. I want to bust this myth that cats yeah. are 
affectionate. They are very, very affectionate. In fact, it's harder to rehome a cat than Absolutely. a dog. I would think. I would think so. So, so, so all these yeah. memes that come about, you know, cats being standoffish and you know all of that. After I got my cat, I think that that kind of changed in my mind. Correct. Correct. So, okay. So I think we've gone through a little bit of discussion on you know uh, large breed, small breed, what breed, uh, indoor dog, outdoor dog, active dog, uh, lazy dog. You know, it could be any of that. Uh, I think to summarize that is, uh, wouldn't you think it is fair to say that you should try and get a dog that suits your existing lifestyle, and don't think. You get a very active dog, thinking that you would change your lifestyle because that may or may not even happen, you know. Right. So, and uh, maintenance versus management, you should really be able to pick a dog based on uh, the temperament and management of the dog rather than maintenance of the dog. Because with the kind of products available today, I don't think it's rocket science. And I, yeah. So I had no clue about grooming a dog and I really did put in a lot of effort and you can say that I went on the other side, but uh, <laughs> you know, I really figured it's really easy and I've now kind of taken it as a mission in my life to, you know, give out everything that I know to everyone. So everyone who's had a puppy from me, I tell them, it, you know, it's really easy. And especially in situations like this, today's Corona lockdown situation, groomers are not able to work. It's not safe for them. It's not safe for you. So if you can really manage your dog reasonably well at home and it's really not that difficult, you need some basic tools. And I've been posting on my Instagram page every day about one tool that I use, you know, just so that people understand. And uh, I realized that I was not going into too much of detail. I said, OK, now every time I write about the tool, I'll also go into details of how you use it, you know. Jerry, and I put a nail clipper on because that's very important. Everyone First thing I posted is nail clipper. Yeah, I'm sorry. But that's very important that everyone should learn. It's not It's not yes. difficult. You might make a mistake. It might bleed once or twice, but you learn from that. And you have to learn to clip your dog's nails. Yeah. So I said, you know, a lot of people uh, hesitate. And uh, it's not just uh, people, but uh, even vets or people who, uh, some of the groomers, they're scared to clip the nails short enough for the fear of cutting the wick and letting the dog bleed then uh, in my view it's okay if the dog bleeds because you can quickly set that up and you know stop that but if you keep cutting little by little every time incrementally that nail keeps growing long and eventually i've seen that every dog by the time the dog is about three to four years old has got this very long nails and it's even affecting their pasterns you know especially the front legs of course it will it will it definitely will so, in fact, I am a firm believer that everybody should know and learn at least the basics of grooming their own dog. It's not rocket science. You have a bath every day. You shampoo your hair every day and condition it and blow dry it. That's pretty much about it. And you have so many nice tools available, you know. And earlier it used to be so difficult. I'm sure you have brought all the stuff that you had from abroad, right, at the time That's when you were Everything, everything. And, but you know what? At the end of the whole deal, Cherian, uh, what do I use? I use a cone. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have Akitas, okay, an American Akita, right. and yeah. the German Shepherd. At the end of it, you use one of those stripping tool. What is it called? De shedding the shedding tool. The de shedding tool. Okay. I use a de shedding tool. I use a cone. And um, I'm, I mean, uh, I, 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 I use a normal shampoo. Okay. Yeah. I, Sorry, I mean, I, that's what I, I am. I just use a normal big shampoo and I make, um, like, I go to the salon and they have those, you know, five liter or yeah, yeah, the gallons, yeah, ten liters out of it. You just have to uh, mix it with it, okay. And, I, and that's what I use for my dogs and mm -hmm. always shining, and they're always in the best condition as far as their coat is concerned. You just right. have to clean them once, uh, twice a day. That's it, that's it, yeah. A Labrador once. Right. So even cockers, you know, I find uh, all that I do on uh, a daily basis is I blow dry them with cold air. I don't use hot air every time. I okay. use hot air only when I'm drying them after a bath. I blow dry them cold every day and just try and brush them. And I try and avoid all kinds of brushing dry because that kind of breaks the coat a lot. So, you know, I kind of avoid that and then, you know, uh, maybe use a conditioner spray. And I think the other day we were discussing about conditioner sprays. So all I do is it's not rocket science. 
you can take a little bit of your conditioner, mix it with 12 to 15 parts of water and just spray it on the dog. And that's what I use. And it's amazing the result that you get out of it. You have show dogs, Karen. And if you don't have show dogs, all you need to do is just, you know, take off the hair from the, the bottom, trim all your uh, the pads. Yep. The, yeah. And you're good to go. You're good to go. You just have to make sure that, you know, the cocker's ears are not in the food. You yeah. So that, yeah. That's true. So uh, for the cocker ears, I find it easy to use those snoods. I just make like a cylindrical thing with elastic on both sides and just put it on, you know, and that's it. So uh, the advantage with this conditioning spray is that one, also your dog smells fresh every day. Absolutely. You yeah. know, and so uh, irrespective of show dogs, and I think in India more so there is this myth that, you know, oh no, I don't want a show dog. So a lot of people don't really understand what is a show dog. And there are a lot of people saying that, okay, short quality puppies for sale, double boned puppies for sale. I, I'm like, okay, do they have an extra bone or, you know, what, what is that? But I would say that you, uh, it's, so it's just the health of the dog, a good dog with good health, well kept is a show dog. Don't you think so? Do you get grimy dogs in the show rings when you're judging? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. But <laughs> So no, no, a uh, show dog is a completely different topic. So, right. uh, uh, you know, um, most of the most of the viewers are not even looking for a show dog. So uh, that's a different, that, that you go to a different breeder. No, no. You don't to All I'm breeder. saying is my belief is a good, well-bred, healthy dog can be a show dog in Indian circumstances at least. As far as I'm concerned, any dog you get home is your show dog. Simple Absolutely. as that. Yeah. That's the best dog in the world is the dog you have at home. That's my. You know, that's the my reason why I brought that up is a lot of people say that I don't want a show dog. I want a pet dog. But I'm saying your pet dog is shouldn't be an inferior dog, because a healthy dog with all the right disposition should be the pet absolutely. that you choose for your home. Absolutely. When you're looking for a puppy, you look, you see the eyes, you check the eyes. They need to be clear. You need to see that the dog is not wormy. It yeah. does not patches. It's healthy. He's running around, he's happy. Uh, usually when you're there, you're spending about two hours with him, three hours to choose a puppy. Right. When he's pooping, you know that he's got a firm stool. He's fine yeah. then. And, and, he's, and he's shining, he's glossy, he's a happy dog. Right. A sick dog will not be a happy dog. So it's yeah. just, I mean, it's, it's, when you're choosing a, a puppy, it's not difficult to see a healthy, happy dog. It's not. So what should uh, ideally be people looking for when they go out looking for a puppy? I think we, uh, you know, we can come back to it. What kind of, uh, so if somebody chooses to, if they're not able to find a dog to adopt, uh, you know, uh, a rehomed dog or a rehomed puppy or an indie dog, you know, um, what, what, and now let's say, for example, for any of their reasons, they've chosen to have a particular breed of their liking. And now they are going in search for a breeder who is breeding that breed. Correct. How do you think they should go about doing that? Well, first of all, where have they seen the breed? Talk to the person uh, who's, you know, uh, they must have seen that breed with someone. Mm -hmm. Go spend some time with that person. Where did he get his dog from? It's, mm -hmm. you know, it's very, it's, uh, it's very important when you are learning, when you're going to go get something for yourself, I mean, these days, internet, everything is so easily available. Now, right. tomorrow, uh, Karen, tomorrow you want to buy a car. You just mm -hmm. don't, go to, you don't go to the market and say, okay, you know, I want this, this car. I mean, I just want anything that's, you know, uh, the cheapest car out or something. You right. will do your homework. You will spend a month. I promise you. Yeah. Uh, to this versus this, this versus that. Then you will talk to people. Okay, uh, right. you have this. You have this car. How is it going? How is it running? Blah blah yeah. blah. You you will call up at least twenty people to uh, what's, twenty. Euros. What's the mileage? How much does maintenance cost? What parts are available? Where is the service center? Exactly, and uh, so to buy that car, right? And you will also talk to the service people. You'll go yeah. there. You see the car. You'll come back home. You'll go right. to another place. You'll see another uh, car, and you'll come back home. And then as a family, you'll decide which car is unique suitable for your for you. suitable for your uh, for your family. Yeah. Well, 
the puppies are the same way. You just don't go walk in and you just pick up the first puppy. You talk to that person. If he's able to satisfy you, okay? If he's able to satisfy <coughs> you about right. the health of the puppy, the health you can see about right. And you, you're able to see the at least one parent, at least the mother of right. that puppy. So you look at that puppy, the mother. The mother should be at good, in good health. Yeah, mm -hmm. the puppy should be minimum, as far as I'm concerned, eight weeks old before you decide to choose a puppy. That's two before months old. Minimum. Yeah. So in my minimum. view, smaller breeds and medium breeds, even two months, they're really small. But for too a large, too yeah. small. Yeah, so I don't let out any of my puppies till they're three months old. And people argue with me saying, you're giving me not a puppy, you're giving me an older dog. I said, no, I'm not giving you a dog. You know, this is how much that puppy needs to stay on and develop. So, right. So you okay. have to understand that if anyone is trying to sell you a puppy which is 30 days old, 40 days old, 45 days, 48 days, 50 days, that guy is not an ethical breeder. Right. He's not. Yeah, He's I think for his livelihood. That's true. That's true. And at the cost of those puppies and their dogs. So if you're going to go and buy that, you get you, you get what you paid for. It's as simple as that. It's yeah. nobody's but yours. Because you, you can go to internet, you can read. Don't bring home a puppy before eight months uh, 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 eight eight old. And as you said rightly. A smaller dog, a little older, three months, yeah. minimum. You know? Right. So, and you, and he's going to come to you, and he's going to stay with you for 12, 15 years. So, definitely you want a healthy dog. Definitely you want a good companion. Definitely you want a stable dog. Right. There you okay. are. So, um, you know, a lot of people call up breeders or some places. They don't even look into where the puppies are raised, what kind of space have they got. And India at this point in time do not have regulations, you know, covering how much should the, be the space in breeders' places or whatever. So in the absence of... We do. I don't... Okay. We do. We, we do have a dog. Yeah, yeah, we don't follow them. Yeah. We don't follow them. So uh, maybe it's not implemented. So, uh, you know, I feel that it should be on the part of the puppy buyer, somebody who's trying to bring a puppy home their responsibility to kind of go and see for real uh, in, and in what environment is the puppies being raised. Don't you think that is important? Very important, Jerry, and very important because they need to go and spend time with that puppy, two hours. Exactly. And yeah. if that place is smelling, stinking, right. it's, it's un, if it's unhygienic, if the mother is skinny and has, you know, and looking, um, you know, uh, sick and tired. Yeah. Not a place for you to go pick up your puppy. In my view, I think by the time the puppies are two months to three months, mothers are back in full bloom. You know, they are back in their full condition. You know, of course, of course they yeah. are. Of course they so, are, and yeah, and 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 you're and if you're going to a, go into this room, this tiny room, and they have you know five puppies and different breeds, you need to come out of that place. You need to come right. out of that place. Yeah, yeah. But and also. If you're doing this, I don't think you should visit more than one place in a day because you there are chances that you carry infections from one place to the other and in that and you know unknowingly hurt some puppies. So it's best to visit one place, go back home, have a shower, go back the next day to look at it. But you know, would you tell me something? Would you go to a kabadiwala to buy a, 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 your car? <laughs> Absolutely, that's true simple it's simple yeah. or someone who's turning them out at home and saying this is a home homemade car yeah uh, right 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 so i you know i was just quickly looking at uh, uh, comments and i forgot that we got too busy talking to each other that i forgot to look at the comments you know so okay, Sharad is online, so I've yeah, 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 yeah. I just uh, so uh, Sharad said we have to bust this misconception about show dogs being yeah show dogs are pet dogs. I I will all that I'm trying to I was trying to say was you know a lot of pet homes think that show dogs are something else. They don't want a show dog. They want a pet dog. But 
I believe that every show dog is a pet dog first. And, sure. Sure, yeah. and, and every pet dog should be as healthy and as good as any show dog that, you know, anyone can find. So and kept as well and kept and kept as well. Yeah, of course. Mm, yep. Yep. In fact, in my uh, experience, I see a lot of pet homes who are so passionate about it and, you know, they don't care whether the dog is winning or not. For them, that is the winner every day. You know, I hear about people saying that, I'm sorry, I gave away that dog because, you know, didn't work for me. But it never happens for a pet home. So when people come to me asking, I want a show dog and I want a show only for show, I say, I'm sorry, I may not have one right now. So I always look for a pet home and I, I want that dog to live there forever, you know. So, so yeah. if I don't see that commitment, you know, it's just uh, impossible that I give them a puppy or anything. I'm trying to just look through quickly. My, my, uh, small, experience, my small experience, I picked up a puppy three years ago from, uh -huh. a, top dog, from a top dog in India. Right. And he's not a show dog, but, right. he's, but he's my soul right now. You know? <laughs> my heart and soul, he stays with me and everything. So there's mm -hmm. whatever dog you have at home, that's the best dog in the world. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, people have asked about uh, nail clipping and nail grinders. Um, yeah. so I, I saw that. I saw that. And I was going to answer, yes, Shara, the nail grinder is a very, very um, yes. um, useful tool. Yeah. Because it, what it does is it doesn't let your... The, uh, the wick um, cut. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. bleed. It doesn't bleed. It doesn't and bleed. And then if you do a little every week, it yeah, grinds. The only thing is it takes a lo lot of time. So if you put in every day a little bit of time, one nail a day or two nails a day, you kind oh, of get through with your work. Also it gets hot. The nail gets hot. Remember? Yes, yes. So yeah. your dog pulls back and so you have to... There is a, yeah, it, there is a grinder that I got to use. It's not a heavy duty grinder, but it's a very nice, cute looking grinder, uh, which feels good to hold as well. Uh, it is I th it is an Andes grinder, which I uh, use typically for dogs who might be iffy about it and things like that. Although I prefer the clipper quickly clip it and then use the grinder only to just smoothen the edges. But in my earlier, I think one of my Instagram posts, I've, the first post on tools is a nail clipper and a nail grinder. So for everyone who's at home who find it difficult to clip the dog's nails, I would say this is definitely a product, must pro must have product in, in your list, you know. And if you uh, take your dog on the road twice a day, at yeah. least for a kilometer each, you don't even need to clip your dog's nails anymore. Right. And uh, we have questions on uh, the role of the breeder in puppies' behavior disposition. Uh, I would put that question here. Uh, but I think before we get to that, um, let us say, uh, what what is your view on crate training and how important is crate training? And, uh, you know, there are a lot of misconceptions around crate training. Well, we, uh, for one, have uh, always followed the role of crate training. We've always found it's been uh, a very important uh, aspect of the puppy. In the mm -hmm. aspect is training him to be comfortable, training him to give him his own spot, training him for uh, 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 toilet training him, toilet training in the house, um, and then eventually, right in the beginning, we would keep the crate closed so he right. knows. Yeah. And once he starts getting comfortable, and I promise you, in two days he gets comfortable. Except you have to understand, it can't be a hot place, you know. Yeah. It, it needs it needs ventilation. It needs air, and it needs yes. and it can't be like far away in the you know some place which you're not. It usually we have our dogs in our room. It's very simple. Right. And uh, so when you get a puppy, uh, you don't want to get up and step on pee and uh, poo all night. If, yeah. Okay. So, uh, the crate is the best best answer for that. He stays yeah. inside. You have to wake up and if. You see, when you when you get a, a puppy uh, and a dog, you uh, cannot. You, if you get inconvenience to a large uh, extent, you will mm -hmm. start, you will uh, you will stop looking after that puppy. So you have uh, you have to understand. So you you get up, 
you take the puppy out of the crate, take him out, let him pee, bring him back, let him play for five minutes and put him back into the crate at night. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he knows that that's his space. It takes him two days. Um, you know, our dogs have evolved to a certain extent that they love their space. They love right. their little, little, they feel very secure. Then, yeah. Then they feel so, secure. That's true. They, they love that little space of theirs. And you'll be surprised after a week when you clean that out, what all you'll find. Everything that was missing in the house, you'll find that under them. You know, uh, the mat yeah, in the crate, yeah. yeah so yeah. I start crate training the puppies when they're about two and a half months old because they're all still with me. So I generally have these five or six crates lined up because you know everyone gets their crate. Although I yeah. start with two or three of them in a very large German Shepherd sized crate, okay, and okay. I put the crates in my living room for some time because my kids are playing music, so they play the drums and there's a lot of sound. So my Puppies get kind of sensitized to those sounds and everything. And I find it very interesting to see, you know, after a point, they don't even flinch. Okay, you're crashing the cymbals and playing the drums. I don't care. I'm just going to get my sleep. So uh, a lot of people have this misconception that creating your puppy or dog is very cruel on the dog. No, no, not at all. Not at all. I find that you see a lot of dogs also suffer from anxiety, so, yeah. you know, uh, uh, and separation, separation uh, anxiety, yeah, separation anxiety, you know, and they, they, um, when you have a crate, they uh, they love to get back inside their crate. They know that this is their time. Uh, they, they need to sleep. They need to calm down. Um, mm -hmm. They know you're going to come back, take them out. There's a routine. So mm -hmm. dogs love a routine. They mm -hmm. love a routine. Like when I when I send a puppy home, I tell them. Uh, to your specification, feed that dog every day at that same time. If you mm -hmm. get up at six and that's fine for yeah. you, feed them at six. If you're getting up at nine o'clock, feed them at nine o'clock. Feed them at nine o'clock. Okay. Yeah. Feed them at nine. Do make a routine with them. The moment you make a routine with them, the dogs fall into that. If you do every one day, you want to give food at six. One day you want to give at eight. One day you want to give at nine. That confuses yeah. you. Absolutely. And yeah. that dog never settles down. He never settles down. So right. you need that routine. Um, as for your routine. So, as for uh, your yeah. Routine. Uh, before we move on to that, uh, I also want to clarify that crate training means not leaving your dog at all times in the crate. It means. Not at all. Not <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> not no. all. You, you have to, uh, like maximum for a little puppy, one hour, you know. One hour. Ideally, wow. every time the puppy wakes up, you should be in the vicinity to take the puppy out. Yes. So you need Not to be great. in that area. You need yeah. to know. If he wakes up in about an hour, hour and a half, you will wake yes, up. Yes, that's true. So and I would say, uh, you know, the, the thumb rule that people say that, you know, age of the puppy in months plus one is the number of hours the puppy can hold on the pee. But yeah. I believe it's age of the puppy in months minus one is kind of what I, in my experience, maybe cockers have a smaller bladder size, but they pee a lot. So, no, all, all know, the, especially because yeah. we feed them all this the dry food. So, mm -hmm. uh, I know puppies will be getting water with the dry food because yes. they're soaked. But, um, as a rule, yeah, um, one and a half, and you'll always notice a puppy will squeal a little bit, you know, they kind yeah. of when they wake up because they, yes. they're uncomfortable. That's when that microsecond is the time that you have to take them out. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> that's it. So, so that's why it's important you need to be home when yeah. you are training your dog, when you get right. a puppy. That's, yeah. that's the commitment you have to have. You can't just put the you know uh, puppy in the crate and go shopping for three yeah. hours. No. Right. Yeah. Then it's better you leave him outside. Right. So, uh, and also, unfortunately, what happens is with a lot of breeders, you know, they leave the puppies in those wire cages. And that is not crate training, by the way. You know, so I think it's very important for everybody to uh, uh, security doesn't give them the security. Yeah. And it doesn't give them the freedom to step out to pee and poop. They just get those puppies to, you know, get used to the oh, idea of peeing yeah. and pooping. Yeah. No, no, no. no. You know, you will see that a lot of places you have those tray underneath and then it's just those wired crates so that they don't have to clean up as often. In fact, cleaning is also much easier without even taking the puppy out. So. For the earlier question that Yamika asked, 
uh, you know, about crate training and about the temperament of those puppies and, you know, stuff like that. Uh, it is important for you to go and see with the breeder how the puppies are kept. And if the puppies get enough time to interact with other dogs and, you know, that whole correction happens. Yeah. And uh, they get, a, they should have at least basic space to come out and play a little bit although puppies don't need a lot of exercise but you know very little bit here and there they should have a little bit of free time a little small lawn to play on and you know things like that so crate training as opposed to cages you know so crate is a place where you have constant interaction with your puppy puppy goes in sleeps feel happy about being there as soon as the puppy wakes up you bring the puppy out and then you know send the puppy back that's integral to toilet training and that ideally should start with your breeder and uh, i think this is also something that forms uh ideally should form part of uh the responsibility of uh a breeder i would say you know it starts uh, uh well uh it starts from the breeder okay? yes because absolutely you have to send the puppy onwards to an, another yeah. and it's also the responsibility of the breeder to explain to right uh, the new puppy owner that yeah. you know he's used to this and so you know uh you uh, um yeah keep him on that and it's very important when you take a puppy home mm -hmm. you listen to the points the breeder is telling you because he's had the experience mm -hmm. so had that experience, yeah. that's true and you know it's very important for you uh, I, I, for everybody to get a schedule from the breeder and Hopefully the breeder has been following that schedule and you get to follow that schedule so that the puppy don't really feel displaced you know, yes. from one day to the other. Uh, so there is a question here from Karan saying, uh, Karan, I think we'll take this question after one question. Yamika has asked, do you think crate training works better for medium to small, smaller to medium sized dogs rather than large and excel breed dogs? All, 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 all every all. breed. Yeah. Irrespective. Yeah, irrespective of the size, I think all breeds and it can go a long way in helping you raise the dog. Okay, we'll get to Karan's question. Karan, um, you know, if you when you really look at the instructions, you check on the vaccine company's instructions. There are multiple ways you give vaccines up. Uh, uh, sorry, Anjali, uh, can I take this question? I've just gone yeah. through this, so I'll just clarify it. Yeah, sure. So I never give puppy DP or I never vaccinate the puppy when they're really young. My first vaccination ideally is at 12 weeks that's at three months because my puppies anyway go after that in case if a puppy has to go at three months i choose to vaccinate them only about 15 days 10 to 15 days before they have to leave so uh, it's not necessary to give that vaccine early uh, you can just go on to nobivac or any of vanguard sites and you will get that uh, uh, write up about each vaccine and it depends on what has been the condition of the mother how long the mother has been feeding the puppies what's the condition in which you've kept the puppies so uh, i mean i would uh, you know uh, since we all do uh, keep them really well uh, i don't see a risk of your puppies you know um, getting anything so it really doesn't matter you can vaccinate them much later so uh, you know it, it it's really uh, fine um, so I think we're good with uh, crate training and uh, somebody is asked, can we continue to crate train dogs after puppy stage two? Yes, yeah. at any stage. At any stage, at any stage. It just takes like five days instead of two days. It'll take you five days or maybe it'll yeah. take you a week or two weeks, but you know, keep, keep yeah. it going. I think, uh, you know, when it comes to raising your puppy or dog, it's all about you being firm and being, uh, you know, not letting yourself to be played you know uh, the cute dogs will come in and they will try and take you on a ride just don't give in to it you have to be absolutely firm and that is why i also prefer uh, having these puppies grow up with older dogs because if you see they just grab them and shake them and put them in their place you know yes. they do it perfectly so absolutely yeah um yeah and uh separation anxiety is one of the larger issues that everyone faces and uh what typically happens with separation anxiety is that you have the puppy coming and chewing up all your furniture, you know, peeing all over the house. Uh, a lot of them jump up on your bed and pee and poop on your bed. Because you it's know? just, they're, they're showing, they're, they're talking to you. They're, uh, they're telling you something. It's yeah. not cute. It's not cute when they're doing that. No. And it's and it's not the breeder's fault. And it's, right. not, But basically, the person who's looking after that dog, please yeah. understand. And they're talking to you. They're telling you something that 
uh, is that we have we we've got anxiety. Yeah, something exactly. Happens. So I think the beginning of this anxiety is when you humanize those puppies and dogs too much and you cuddle them all the time. But Absolutely. you know, you yeah. just drop them like that and get out to work when you have to do. And a lot of people, I'm sure, are wanting to get a puppy when there is this quarantine and lockdown and everything happening. And they could, you could be working 60% of the time from home, but or maybe you're not even go, you're working 100% from home. But now is not the time to get a puppy and keep the puppy on your lap all the time, and then one fine day just drop him on the floor and get to your work. That's going to be challenging. So crate training is also something that really I have seen it successfully address separation anxiety issues. So while you're at home, you know, crate training the puppy, the puppy is fine, the dog is fine. And even when you have uh, some guests coming over, some of the people, are, uh, although all of us would like to say that if you're not a dog lover, you're not welcome home. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> We'd love yeah. to do that, but it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way, right? And I've had this experience that... Uh, Early on when I had just two dogs and my dogs used to be, you know, and somebody come came home and it was not that I had to lock up the dog, but uh, we had to open the door and keep it open without the dog running out and getting some stuff in. Locked him in the, locked her in the guest room, pooped on the pillows. Yes. Yeah, that, you know? So, showing, showing the displeasure. Exactly. So all of these kind of behaviors uh, can be managed very well if you just you know, crate train your puppy. So uh, let me just run back to some more questions. Uh, mm, okay. Peeing on your belongings is usually attention seeking. Yes. Uh, destruction is boredom. Yes. Separation anxiety is severe problem. Yes. Okay. I think uh, crate training is really an answer to a whole lot of these things. Sharad uh, says, People should take as much pride in buying yes, crates, buying crates as, as they do in buying uh, baby cots. It's the I, same thing. I, I think we need to, uh, you know, write it down somewhere and this should be, I mean, you should that's be quoting Charak on this. That's fabulous. <laughs> that's really fabulous. That's, Thanks, I mean, this Charak. is so yeah. perfectly written. I, I couldn't have put it any better than this. So, Absolutely. Absolutely. you know, people some, uh, somehow they feel that, oh, maybe I shouldn't get a crate. Uh, or I would get a small crate for now because it's just a puppy. I think that crate is one single piece of investment, you know, which every dog should have for their own good. So, and also uh, when you're buying the crate, remember you buy a full size crate, full size, for adult size crate, because they are expensive. And also, the dog doesn't like changing. That's his home now. That's going to be absolutely. Yeah. That again, you'll have to take a week for him to get used to a new crate. So, yeah. So, which is why. Yeah, when I have puppies traveling before they, so by the time they're about two and a half weeks, um, uh, two and a half months, and yeah. now I have some puppies that age. So I get crates for every single puppy. Correct. Correct. And those puppies travel in that crate to their homes. Correct. So that whole separation anxiety or the first night of yelping and crying and, you know, fussing, all that doesn't happen. So definitely a most important, I think this is the best takeaway from today's session that, you know, crate yeah. training. And I so love what Sharath has written. People should take as much pride in buying crates as they do in buying baby cots. Yes. I agree with Sharath. Totally. So, That's going to be the new. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm going to write that exactly. as. Yes. I'm going to use that a lot. <laughs> I'm going to use this because I have a tough time explaining to people why I need them to buy this crate. You know, it just doesn't, you know, sometimes they feel that, oh, is this guy also trying to palm me another product or another thing and make me spend some more money? You know, they just don't realize that. Yeah. I agree. So anyway, this is fantastic. Uh, any more points? I mean, I think we can go on and on and on with our talks about this, but uh, uh, we have covered pretty much everything. And I think uh, the one thing that you can look at uh, just to summarize on when you go and get a dog from anyone, it could be a shelter and uh, there could be points where I would like to say that, you know, it is no more rescue anymore because of the conditions in which the dogs are at the shelter. It is no more welfare. You know, some of those can go the other way. But, you know, wherever you are planning to get your dog, please visit the place. Please spend a lot more time seeing how they handle things. Make sure that it's a right fit for you. You know, I, at this point, I want to even I want to say again, retreat again, that if anyone is planning to get a dog at this at this very time or in the future, 
please visit your local shelter first yes uh, it's very important because because of this covid-19 a lot of beautiful dogs have been um are just abandoned on the road they need a home they will die in a shelter they've been brought up in a in a family home in, in a family well. yeah so um you know that dog is going to uh, just go to your local shelter you will find a, a dog i promise you you find a dog as go back the next day go back the next day go back yes. the next I think, yeah, that's exactly what I was coming to say. That a simple analogy is, you know, we keep going to the plant nursery to see if there's anything new. If there's anything new, if there's anything new. Absolutely. Keep going back. You, you find a dog which fits for your home. Absolutely. You. That's my appeal to everyone out there. Um, puppies. And give the dog the fewest yeah. number of days in a shelter. As soon as he gets there, try and evaluate. Spend some time with the dog and take that dog with you. Yes. So take four days. Go back yeah. and see the dog again. Try to get yeah. a little information. If you can't spend two hours with that dog, take him yeah. around, walk him, just see what his, uh, you know, yes. his temperament is like. In two hours, you'll come to know a uh, dog's temperament. If you sit down on the ground, spend time with him. Is he yeah. calm? Is he, and he fit. If he doesn't fit, someone else will fit. But yeah. I'm sure you will find a dog in the shelter that will fit. And hey. The, there's only plus 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 in that plus is because you don't have to go through that puppy stay you don't have to feed him four times a day no and plus you've seen him as a full grown dog yes. you know what it's going to look like you're, okay. you're getting what you're getting right now you're getting what you, what you're looking at what you at. see mm. absolutely and let me tell you again you can train any dog at any age yes I think we, uh, I'm a firm believer of that. I mean, right. uh, I've, I've, I've picked up dogs which were 10 years old and they totally adjusted to my family uh, and my home as if they lived there all their life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Fantastic. So uh, just to summarize this bit, whether it is a shelter, whether it is a puppy being rehomed or an adult dog being rehomed or you're getting a puppy from a breeder, I think you should go spend time you should be able to get regular updates and videos so that you get an idea as to how the puppies are being brought up. It should not always be a Photoshop thing. You should see the surroundings where the puppy grow up and the routine that they follow for the puppy. Parent. At least one right. parent. At least one parent. Yeah, especially at, definitely the mother. The puppy is not going to be anything different when it right. grows than the parent. And, and there are a lot of breeders now uh, legally in India and elsewhere, pet shops selling puppies are banned. It's illegal. And it's illegal. Yeah, it is illegal. Uh, and also, I would say that anyone who is saying that, no, you can't come to my place and see my puppies, but I will bring it in a basket to you. No, no, that no. is equally bad. It's like someone saying, I'm going to bring the car to your home. You don't have to come anywhere near uh, uh, my yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, in this case, you are not backed by any guarantees and warranties. If you are buying a car, at least you have a guarantee and warranty by a reputable company. Here, you don't know the reputation of the breeder. Here, you don't know where the puppy has come from. It's just been brought to you in a basket. Don't fall for it. So, um, yeah. So, uh, I think to summarize, it's not rocket science. Uh, you can groom your own dogs. It's not difficult. You just need 10 or 15 minutes in a day. And I'm sure everybody loves to cuddle with a clean, nice smelling dog. Definitely not one which is rolled up, rolled over in poop and pee and everything. So cute puppies is well kept puppies. So and get yourself a crate that baby okay. cot for yourself. <laughs> and it's not rocket science. Don't humanize your puppy. Yeah. Oh, yes. Very Thank important. Don't humanize yeah. your puppy. And uh, he but but treat him like a member of your family. Of your family, yes. So you're not going to let that your child go out and bite people. You're not going to let your child go out and uh, uh, poop all over the place. So and you're not going to let your child misbehave with yourself. You're not going to let the child misbehave with yourself. Mm. And if he's throwing a tantrum, you're going to whack him and bring him back home. Exactly. Right? And yes. Okay. And for that, at that time, please don't use a crate. Don't use crate as a punishment tool. No, no, not, yeah. at, all. not yeah. at all. It should be a happy place. Always yeah. a happy place. Yeah. Yeah. 
And yes, somebody has written, we shouldn't buy clothes for your dogs. Yes, I don't really recommend. No, no, no. <laughs> so every time I, I've spoken to a lot of groomers, they say that, okay, now winter's over. Everyone's going to come to us with matted coats because that's all that happens when you put clothes on your dogs. And they just shave the dog. Absolutely. Now, that's another thing I was just going to come. Do yeah. not shave your dog. Yeah, Summer please. Coming. Summer's coming. Already in my colony, I've already started seeing dogs which have been shaved. Shaved. You have to understand all those dogs are going to get sunburned. They're yes. all going to have a problem. The heat is going to get to them. They don't have sweat glands on their body. Right. So when you're shaving them, you're just exposing them to the heat. I am uh, ending the broadcast soon. Uh, thank you, Dog Spot. And I have uh, I had actually left that message down there about. Um, uh, they're actually started servicing um, uh, all over the country with deliveries and everything at this point in time. So if you guys are really looking to buy something and you're not able to source it, I think uh, now would be a time to uh, uh, kind of maybe check out on Dogspot and check if they deliver to your PIN codes. Um, I completely forgot about announcing this in between, although the scroll was always there. Uh, but yeah, in case if you need help, I think you can reach out on the number which is below. Um, yeah, that's pretty much about it. See you all soon. Thank you very much for being a wonderful audience. Thank you. Bye. Take I'm signing off. Bye.